Hello and welcome to the very first Hilltop Views um, event. We're hosting a panel with all of the presidential and vice presidential candidates for this year's um, student government elections. Uh, there are four candidates, two for president, two for vice president. We have Jamie Cardenas, we have Carlos Martinez, we have Ana Lopez, and we have Ben Griffith. Uh, we're going to ask them some questions now, but before we get started, just a few introductions from each of them. Jamie, why don't you tell us a little something about yourself? Um, so hello, hello, my name is Jamie Gardenas. I am originally from San Antonio, Texas. I'm a political science major with a minor in psychology, and I definitely love being here at St. Edwards, and my involvement has been a huge reason as to why I'm sitting here today, and I'm really excited to run as one of your student body presidents. Carlos? Hello, I'm Carlos Martinez. I'm an RA in Ducharé Hall. Um, I am a sophomore political science major, and like Jamie, um, certainly love the Hilltop, and are very excited we're very excited to um, hopefully usher in a new sort of um, administration, build a, a solid foundation. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm Ana Isabel Lopez, and I'm a junior and a communication major with a concentration in rhetorical and cultural studies. Okay. Sounds fancy, but it's really not. <laughs> and I, I love everything St. Edward stands for, and I would love nothing more to be able to represent it as one of your presidents for next year. Mm -hmm. Ben? Hi, uh, my name is Ben Griffith. I'm a junior from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm also a communication major like Anna, uh, with a concentration in public relations and advertising. Uh, I am a transfer student, so this is my first year on the Hilltop. But meeting all these great people that are sitting beside me has you know, made me want to join you know, a wonderful, wonderful program here at St. Edwards, which is the Office of Student Life and the Student Government Association. Uh, I believe that we've all worked very hard to get here, and I'm really looking forward to you know whatever happens in the future. All right. Um, so just a general question to begin with. You know, start soft. Um, what made you guys decide to run for yeah, the various offices that you are running for? Um, so I think our involvement within this year, Carlos and I, it really just put a passion within us to say, you know what, we really want to be doing this for the students. For me, walking across campus, it's the students that give me energy to go through every single day here on the hilltop and have really made the hilltop feel like my home. And so I just think that it's time to give back to those students and make sure that they are adequately represented on this campus because this is this is their home while they're here at college and we want to make it feel like that. What about you, Anna? For me personally, um, <coughs> Unlike everyone else that's sitting here, I am not a senator. I am I have my own branch, which is the big event, and I am the coordinator for that. And I think it's almost it's almost a privilege to be able to see things from a different perspective and a different lens. And I was able to see things that did work and things that didn't work. And I was able to see things from the student perspective as well as from the SGA's perspective. And I thought to myself, I can be part of that change. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to. Work. All right, and. Uh No, I, I sort of forced her into it. No, 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 uh, no it, was, it was really interesting. I, last semester I was CFO, um, and I was sort of frustrated in the same way that Anna was in certain aspects. And so when the opportunity came to run, uh, to apply for Senate, um, I jumped on board and thought this is my chance to, to get involved and to start pushing in some, some great um, pieces of legislation that could benefit the Hilltop. Being new on campus, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Uh, however, yeah, yeah, really. Um, but however, being involved has shown me how important it is to be involved on campus. Uh, I think that's something that is one of my core values is involvement. Um, you know, you can't really go through the motions of just going through class and then going home. Uh, you know, you really have to make a stride to meet new people and understand their perspectives. Um, and so that's one of the things that, that made me want to run was meeting new people and understanding what they think is wrong at the university and how hopefully you know, we would be able to change that. Mm -hmm. So this presidential, vice presidential race is the only competitive race um, in the elections this year because there's 11 senators and 12 um, seats open. So you guys have the privilege of already knowing who your senators will be. Um, so what do you think about these people and how do you think they're work 
Um, I think all of the candidates who are running for Senate are great. They represent different aspects throughout campus, which is something that we definitely would like to see, you know, in our future association is we want we want them to be representative of everyone. We don't want the Senate just to be representative of small parts, but we represent the whole. So I think that the bunch that we have that are running are definitely a great group of candidates. <coughs> um, I love the group that we have. I spoke to Greg and I'm so excited that he's coming back. Also Victoria representing the athletic team. And then we have Timmy, who or Timothy, who's from campus ministry. We have, they have all different perspectives, and I'm very interested, as long as uh, as well as the other eleven, to see what legislation they're bringing to the table, because there's so many different perspectives. They're not concentrated on just one. Mm. So, what type of student uh, would you guys want to fill that 12th spot? Because the anticipation is building for me personally. I just <laughs> want to know who the 12th disciple will be. What do you guys think? Of? Um, I think that 12th person is someone who has a passion to serve the student body, someone who feels the calling. I think it's not something that you think like, oh, like, yeah, okay, but I think you really wake up and you're like, hey, I want to do this for my students. I think I would be a great representative. And so I think anyone who has the passion to go out and apply is who it ought to be. Certainly somebody who's dedicated and knows other parts of, of campus. I think it's, it's, it's certainly important to, to see that diversity, of course, with um, the people who are already running, the, like, like they both mentioned, they're, they're a diverse group. Um, and so somebody who brings a new light, certainly, and somebody who's, who's willing to take that, that extra step to, to really um, encompass all parts of the university. Is there anyone specific that you guys are thinking of? I mean, since it's in a, in, in a, it will be an appointed role, yes. it'll then come down to uh, the vice president. So it'll it'll open an application and whoever applies from that application will, will then decide who. So there's not anyone that you're dying to have on your team right now that yes. you're looking at? Who is that? <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to sound like that. Um, I think we need someone that's passionate, like Jamie has said. I strongly agree with that. We need someone that doesn't just see it as a role and just showing up and going through the motions. We need someone that has a unique perspective. And I think something that we're missing definitely, I personally would like to see Narda Salinas on there. I had the pleasure of working with her as one of my committee heads for Big Event. And I see the passion she has and I see how Yes, yeah, she's quiet with her thoughts, but when she speaks, she speaks with volumes. And I really appreciate that. And I think she will bring um, a, a different light to, as well, on the science department of the university. You know, you know who I'd like to see? I'd like to see a, a graduate student. I think, I think that would, that's, a, that's a great part of campus that is not represented <laughs> on our student government. I th I'd really like to see a graduate student. I actually, yeah, I think that'd be, I think that's great because I think that's a voice that as undergraduates we, we don't hear of often unless we have a few friends who happen to be graduate students. Yeah, I think that would be awesome because I think that's an area of campus that we don't reach right now as part of the Student Government Association because we do focus so much on the undergrad. So yeah, that would, that would actually be awesome. All right, so SG obviously has undergone, undergone a lot of changes in the last few semesters. Um, if you were elected into office, what would you keep the same about SGA and what would you change? I think, uh, you know, if I were elected as your vice president, I think we'd need to restructure all of SGA internally. Uh, what Anna and I hope to do is to reflect back on what has worked this semester uh, and previous semesters. And then really understand, you know, what went wrong and, you know, discuss with, with our cabinet and figure out how we can improve SGA. Um, again, the students' concerns and the students' opinions are very important, um, but we really want to reflect internally uh, and really figure out you know, the issues at hand. Yeah, the direction that I really like that we've been taking recently is, um, and we have the pleasure of having both Jamie and Ben, is the Hot Seat Initiative, which that's the direction that both Ben and I would like to take, and that's what we would like to go on with as well. I think, oh, I think um, 
I greatly appreciate uh, Vice President Edwards' dedication to the association. I think um, he has left a solid foundation from which any vice presidential um, candidate to come is going to have just a smooth transition in. Mm -hmm. um, and also, Mr. Cruz is, has been an effective leader in certain realms, and I think he too um, has left the association in a way that we can build upon and grow upon. Yeah, I definitely agree. We're, we're focusing on creating a strong foundation for which the association to grow. So I think there are a lot of great aspects that we can kind of cling on to. Like, like Anna had said, our hot seat initiative, I think regardless of how this goes, that's going to be something that is yes. going to be continued. Yeah which is awesome because it's gonna be a great means of student outreach for the next year so that we can really go out to the students um, across the board. And so I definitely think just creating that solid foundation for which the entire association to grow in the future is what's really going to be solidified within the next year. So one of the changes that I'm talking about is the accountability code that was abolished um, recently. So. Anna, you were not a senator, so I can't, I can't grill you on it. I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, I know you're responsible to that bill. Actually, better sponsor the bill. Sorry, better sponsor the bill. Yeah. 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 Um, Carlos, you voted for the bill. Jamie voted against it. How does that play out between the both of you? I think that Carlos and I have this substantial relationship where we can disagree on things. But it's, and we do. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and we do. But we come to this like common understanding. So I remember, actually remember after that meeting, he and I were walking back afterwards and we were talking about it. And he was asking me, well, like, you know, why didn't you vote for it? Like, what, like, what did you have against it? And I said, you know, this is, this is where I came from. I wanted to see uh, Senator Paula Gallegos brought up a good point of having something tangible to be looking at at that time before we accepted it. And I thought, you know, that's, that's true because Right now, we're blindly accepting something. That's how I felt. And so he said, okay, I totally, like, I see and I understand. And I think that's how our relationship works is whether if we disagree on something, we are able to have a good discussion about it to say like, well, okay, well, why do you see it this way? And I think that enhances us if we do disagree on anything because then we come like to some common ground, to some sort of agreement, and we take pieces of each other's differences to make them one. And Carlos, why did you vote for this bill? So I had the perspective since I was not, I did not go through the accountability process as the senators did since I was CFO um, at the time. And so when I was reflecting on, on how I was going to vote, I thought, you know, if I were a senator, if, if well, in this case I was, um, but as CFO, as I was looking in, I saw just an accountability code that did not reflect um, the Senate's actual success or actual um, accomplishments. I think I thought it was very, I don't know, very uh, educational in taking a test and, and participating in activity. I thought it was just not an, ac an accurate measure. And so um, I thought that since uh, by, by abolishing it, that it would give us um, this, this space, this now space where um, Faith, the Parliamentarian, and, and Ben would, would work towards an ethics review um, more assuredly than had we um, left it in place, because then we, we just leave it in place and we'll let next year's Senate talk about it. And so now that we're having this discussion, um, we have this, this pressure from the media, not, not that it's a bad pressure, it, it really isn't, um, to, to, to establish what we're going to um, replace it with. And I think that that was my motivation, is that should we wait, it's never going to get done. So if, if we push it in now, we can have these conversations, so then we can push something in sooner rather than later. So then how come there wasn't a push to kind of create a replacement, like Jamie said, before the um, it was abolished? So what, when I understood, yeah. and you can correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, is that there was, um, there was already a goal of establishing an ethics code. So my understanding was that that was going to come within a month or two months after we um, abolished. So that was that was my motivation: is that we're going to see something in a month or two, and then we can agree, disagree, or even if we disagree, we can bring back the other accountability code, which is already written. 
So that was my understanding. Okay. And Ben, um, yes. why did you sponsor this book? You know, reflecting on what Carlos has talked about, uh, I passed the accountability test uh, the first time around when, when, we, when we took it in the fall. Um, and even though I passed it, I felt, you know, as I was taking the test and doing the various activities, that again, it wasn't very reflective. Um, you know, there's, there's different levels of commitment that, you know, I believe were, you know, experienced through Senate. Uh, obviously, uh, there were some senators who weren't, you know, doing their job to the fullest. And so in discussing with Faith, I think that this ethics code, uh, which is being based on extensive research from other universities, uh, needed to reflect more of the commitment aspect rather than focusing on you know, various tasks and, and questions about the association. You know, as, as senators and a part of a big event, we all have specific roles within the association, and going into that, you know, we should know what we're getting ourselves into. Um, so the reason why I sponsored this code of ethics was because it would be more beneficial for us as senators to hold each other accountable, and you know, that way we wouldn't have to take a test. I mean, who wants to take a test? I didn't want to. Um, so it's, it's definitely more reflective about how the association can go about their roles better in the future. And uh, hopefully, you know, the next year within SGA, it'll, it'll reflect that. Anna, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but since you weren't in uh, SGA, you weren't a senator, you didn't have an opportunity to vote. If you were a senator, what would you, what side would you be on? I'm um, just kidding. Actually, um, that's a really good question. From an outside perspective, the test kind of, I was kind of disappointed in how many senators didn't know the codes. And that's kind of something that took me off guard. I was just kind of like, I saw everyone studying them and I'm like, well, shouldn't, shouldn't you know them? Like, not necessarily like by heart and by honor, but just like be at least familiarized with them. So that was kind of disappointed. But I also understand the perspective of kind of, um, I don't know, having a, a different thing, which is like ethics, you know, and holding that way accountable and more face to face. And I agree with Jamie. I don't know if I would have agreed if I didn't have something in my hands because it's like agreeing blindly, and I don't agree with that as well. So I think I would have been abstained. Okay. We're going to move a little bit away from that. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's a new policy. Well, it's not a new policy, it's a very old policy, but it's being enforced all of a sudden where um, student employees can't work more than 20 hours. So, which means a lot of um, students can have multiple on-campus jobs, and this especially is affecting RAs because their positions are considered 20 hours, uh, but they're not paid bi-weekly or anything like that. So, what do you guys think about that policy? We can't directly comment on from the side of residents' life because we don't want to get involved in, in those sort of um, issues. So, we we can speak as as students though in no way as, as RAs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's just my, my only precursors, that we don't want to um, offend anyone, we don't want to overstep our, our bounds, especially since we're not experts and, right. and in that department. But we can speak as students. Okay. Um, I think, you know, it's St. Edward's policy, and so it's something that we have to go with, and though people may not necessarily agree with it, it's something that it's there and there's no fighting. It's something that it's, it's been set in place and just not necessarily pushed. But I think it's, I think there's also purpose to it because since the limit is set at 20 hours, that is St. Edward's policy as opposed to um, coming from the Affordable Care Act, that it's St. Edward's limited at 20. And I think that's because at the university, they really want us to focus on being a student also. They want to make sure that our focus is in the right place, is in the right direction towards our studies, and yes, we may have jobs on campus and things like that, but ultimately, we come to this university to be a student before anything else. I think she hit the, the nail on the head, is, is that we're students first, period, first and foremost. And so, by ensuring that we're um, sticking to those 20 hours, we have enough time to focus on our studies, and then contribute up to 20 hours of our time in whatever realm we can. And I think it's especially important because that way we can be um, specifically committed to other things. Um, our, our commitment will be direct and you, 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 you limit the um, margin of error, per se, of 
of getting involved in something and not not coming full circle and, and, and fulfilling your. Clean, if I'm being honest, I don't know if it's necessarily fair that students can't work more than 20 hours. And I completely agree with what Carlos is saying. We're here, we're going to school, and St. Edward is known for being an education focused campus. But what about those individuals that almost, for me, I pay for my own school? You know, I. Uh, my parents don't pay for that and what if I would like to work more than 20 hours and what if I live on campus and I don't have a vehicle to go to another job to work those hours so that's where my question is and where my concern is because what about those other students that we're not thinking about if it has to work well in the past what happened recently that it's changed and what are we not being told or are we not being told enough not saying that St. Edwards is doing something wrong it's just I would like more information as to how they um, developed this conclusion mm -hmm. personally what about you Ben? I think, you know, for every student it's different, uh, commitment-wise and what you're involved in. Um, so in some cases, you know, the 20-hour cap limit would be, you know, I think a good idea. But in other cases, like Anna said, you know, there are some students who might be limited by the fact that it's a 20-hour cap limit. Um, you know, we are students and that does take up a lot of our time, um, but a lot of students do things off campus and go into other realms uh, of involvement. So I think, you know, we need to look at it carefully and decide. Uh, how impactful it is for you know different sets of students, and, and I think that's what it comes down to is to then assessing how it how the implementation goes next semester, mm -hmm. and then seeing what students' response is, and mm -hmm. then as elected uh, representatives of the student body, we then can voice those concerns sure. to the administration. Mm -hmm. uh, so for many students, uh, SGA kind of has this perception of just being a group of students that are just trying to add another line to the resume. Um, <laughs> How can you guys change this perception if you're elected and kind of get students more involved and, and feeling less like outsiders? I think um, something we've talked about a lot when we have talked about running is just that exact thing. People see SGA as these high and mighty people who just kind of like, took it again, like you said, as a resume, resume builder. builder. But I think in, if elected, our administration would like, we would like to humble ourselves as an administration and come down to really be with the students because we are students and we are representatives of the students so we should be out there with them so again as we were talking earlier continuing with the hot seat initiative and reaching out to them in different aspects we would also like to see um, student government representatives in student orgs across campus so that we can know explicitly what these areas need and really, we want to come, we want to go out towards them because we can't expect them or just assume that they're going to automatically come to us, especially, uh, there's a lot of people who don't even know where student life is. And so I think really, I think we would like to humble the administration to that and really come down to the students because we need to be with the people we represent. We are not above them, we are of them. <coughs> I agree completely with what Jamie is saying. I, one of our goals is to eliminate the stigma that SGA carries and we're not an elitist group of students even though we've been perceived that way and some people within the organization and past administrative might have even seen themselves that way but that is not what we represent as your potential president and vice president. We want to build first establish a community within us as SGA and then go outward and build a community within different organizations. We've actually already met with a couple organizations this week and we're meeting next week with them and just hearing their concerns and what can we do for them because we're here for them. It's not the other way around and I think we should take on the role as servant leaders because that's what we're here for. And of course all of the information we're collected, collecting, if um, we win the election or not, we're, we're going to pass that information on to Jamie and Carlos so they can use it and they know what these organizations expect and need from us. What about you, Ben? So I think, you know, Going back to uh, student engagement, uh, I think that that's something that's you know very important. I think you know as a transfer student and coming into a new a new school, a new city, new state, uh, you know not knowing anyone. Um, I think you know finding your niche in certain organizations and certain groups is is something that's very important. You know, as student government, we can't be concealed in the student life office. We can't, you know, just huddle around our friend groups and tell them what we're doing. Uh, there needs to be, you know, active outreach to the students. And, you know, Anna and I both really want to make sure that we're, we're doing that. Um, and we'll call each other out if we don't, yes. uh, for sure. Um, you know, with, with collaborations with student organizations, I think, 
you know, we'll get information that we haven't gotten in the past. Um, you know, hopefully Ann and I will, will plan uh, events with organizations once a month, so that way we're working with them on a, you know, hopefully a weekly basis and really starting those conversations that haven't happened in the past. Can I go ahead. Just chime in on that? There's just one thing. Um, I think also something that, that I've noticed is um, the perception within student life is in itself um, is the collaboration within student life. Mm -hmm. And so something that we've already started was a, a collaboration with the student leadership team with Edwin Weidman. Um, we did a leaders on the lawn day. So that's already building bridges within student life. And that's one thing. And then another thing is we've been working very closely with Students for Sustainability um, in this green fund endeavor. Um, because there is an example of a student organization that really wants something um, to come to fruition. And so here we are collaborating and showing the student body, look, this is a group of students who wants to see this done. Now let's, let's figure out if, if we can do that. So um, you mentioned uh, just student life in general having that kind of same perception. Um, how do you feel about the possibility of moving SGA outside of student life? Because for speaking from Hilltop Views, at one point we were a part of student life as well, and we had to move away from that. We felt we needed to do that to kind of um, be real journalists. Do you guys feel like you'd be a real government if you were able to move out of student life? We've actually we've kind of talked about this before, and we've thought about like what if. SGA was in main building because in main building that's where you have all the access to a lot of administration where we are in content constant sorry uh, communication with as senators as student leaders because reaching out to the administration is the only way that we can actually make change for our students so that was one thing that we talked about either that or just really inviting people in to student life so that it's a more <clears throat> welcoming place that people feel comfortable coming to. But I think if we if we were to move, I think main building would be a great place for us to go. I think certainly though, um, we we can we can certainly do a lot more right now within student life mm -hmm. and, and building that gap and, and being a cohesive unit within student life. Yeah. Um, and trying that route um, first. Um, but certainly if 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 more uh, elected um, students are are really hoping to get that move and the student body wants it, then by all means, that we should move in that direction. What about you, Tim? I don't think we've taken advantage of the fact that we're in student life. It's like everyone stays in their office and nobody really communicates. And I think that's every organization that's in there. And I don't know if that's just something that's happened over time or something that we've created this year. I'm not really sure. But on my way over here, I was talking to a student and she was saying, like, well, I, it just doesn't make sense to me that SJ is in student life. She's like, I think that if you were in administration, y'all would have a different connection, and maybe people would like quote unquote take us more seriously. But then I don't know if that would build an even bigger bridge between us and the students, and us thinking that we need to be separate from Rock. And then maybe in future years, uh, potentially, if SJ is in a different place, they could potentially move on to a main building. Well, yeah, I think you know we just need to take advantage of everything that's offered within student life. Um, I think it's been a bit neglected, uh, and I think you know, in collaboration with the different offices in student life, that'll help you know obviously build an uh, internal community that is needed uh, for SGA, uh, and it'll allow us to give feedback from the other organizations within student life about SGA. Um, I don't think we we really you know have ever gotten an opinion on how student government is viewed within student life. Um, besides if we ask for our friends or something like that. But having uh, a whole group's perspective on SGA and you know what they've been doing and how that's impacted the students, I think is something we would definitely need to take into account. Mm -hmm. So every election we, we hear the kind of a similar um, narrative about we want to connect to students more, we don't want to be SGA and high and mighty until after elections and nothing changes. Um, but one way, one trend that we definitely have constantly seen is um, elected officials, president, and vice president, choosing people that are already within SGA to fill those cabinet positions. How are you guys planning on doing that? Are you picking outsiders or are you looking at more people who already know how your organization is? 
So <clears throat> it all depends really on the applicant pool yeah, because you apply. you apply for a cabinet position and mm -hmm. so we can't really control at this point who has already applied. But I think certainly having, based on who, we, we don't know, we haven't seen yeah. the list of those who have applied, but I think definitely opening the spectrum to, to anybody. I think to us there isn't, oh, well your previous experience in SGA specific because I think your experience as a student is what is really truly important and especially if you haven't necessarily been here before then you can bring in something new that there some gap that we may not have seen or you may have really had a great experience and made a great presence in SGA that we can say you know we really want you back mm -hmm. and I think it all depends on what our applicant pool looks like and there's no saying now who's going to be in it or not it just it really depends what our applicant pool looks like and applications are open until April 15th so if anyone still wants to apply, they certainly can, uh, and I, you know, advise you to do so. Uh, especially new students who haven't been a part of student life or SGA, like Jamie was saying. Uh, even transfer students. I mean, I'm a transfer student myself, and I think having that perspective of, I mean, I came from a, a large state school, um, so having that perspective and then bringing that to St. Edward's campus, I think, is something that would be great to have. Um, but definitely, you know, apply if you want to. It's April 15th, uh, just to let everyone know. To that. I mean, I think we both really are passionate about um, eliminating that stigma. And I mean, my hope and my mission is to for us to be the new sets to be sitting here, and then for you to be sitting there, and for you to be able to say there's 30 people running for Senate, and there's probably even a, a third party running for president because we want them to just feel so connected to like really change how they see SGA to be like, you know what, I want to be a part of this, I want to be a part of that change. How can I be a part of that change? Okay, so... Okay. Oh, I was Go just going to add just one very <laughs> weird thing that I wanted to add. Um, um, something that I think really um, builds community, um, something that uh, Jonathan Edwards, the Vice President, has done very well, is he consistently wants to go to the huddle and invites everyone to the huddle <laughs> after Senate meetings. Yes. Um, yes. Jamie and I share at least one meal together a week, and I, I think Food is just one of these great things. It is. It's one of these great. It's one of these great things that that we all just have in common. This thing that we can all really connect on. How much we like a certain dish or what it reminds us of. And I think I, next, if, if should we, if we be elected, we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot over over meals. I think that's a great place to, to have open and honest conversation. Well. Um, so I'm just asking for some honesty here. Um, what do you guys think of uh, Jonathan Cruz's administration? Do you, do you think it was a success or a failure? And um, I know we had senators attempt to impeach him, and that didn't work out so well. Um, what do you guys just think in general about his administration? And how do you think you will kind of follow suit or not? follow suit? You can take some time. <laughs> Um, Cruz is a very close friend of both. I mean, yeah. we were in the same friend group. Um, I think communication lacked on all parts, and it's not just his fault. And I think I generally think he tried his best. Everyone is a leader, but not everyone is meant to lead. And I think that he generally did attempt his best, but I don't think he he got that support of the senators in coming in the second semester. I don't, I, I think once he lost the respect of his senators, it was very difficult to get that back. So any attempt that he has made or, you know, is currently making, it's kind of, I don't, it's, it's kind of rejected in a way. And, and that really frustrates me because he is trying, but that's why we build a community within SJ first. And initially before we go out there and try to save the world, you know, we build that communication. Maybe that didn't have to go to a Senate meeting. Maybe we could have felt comfortable and be like, Hey, you know, Carlos, I, I really don't agree with what's going on here. You know, we should talk about it. And I feel like we didn't, they didn't have that relationship, the vice president or the president or the president with, with either branch. And that's just my personal perspective on the situation. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would have to agree. agree. I think communication, communication lacked, you're right. right. Um, um, I think when, when it came, came to this whole, this whole when, when senators, you know, attempted to impeach him, I spoke with him and he was full board. He did not see it coming, he did not understand 
why, why? and I think a simple conversation just like Anna said, it, it really could have changed how that, that happened. And she's, ex she's exactly, exactly right. right. Once that, that happened, he lost the respect of a lot of people in the association that I honestly think some people, like you, some, some people were too stubborn to try and give them another chance. I believe everyone deserves a second chance, regardless of who you are, where you come from. And I think a lot of people just automatically had a negative attitude towards him. And for him, he tried. He really, he made his effort and he did the best that he could to try and come back. But just like Anna said, you know, communication, which like we were saying earlier, like we disagree on something and we're gonna talk about it. I think if something had, would have been said to him beforehand, I think we'd be having a whole other story right yes, now. Like we sure. wouldn't be having this conversation. I think the the whole way, the whole process of impeachment, the way it was brought up, you know, I didn't know it was gonna happen until the yeah. day of, uh, <laughs> and so that's obviously a communication problem. Uh, and the reasoning behind it was a little unclear, and so you know, trying to make a decision of that, you know, weight uh, was really difficult. Um, you know, the Senate met, I don't know how many, like two or three times at least, just to talk about, you know, what this would mean for campus, um, because we weren't we weren't necessarily clear. Um, so you know, communication within obviously all the branches is something that's paramount to a successful association. Um, you know, obviously we're communication majors, so we could use that to our to our advantage. But uh, you know, making sure that everyone's you know on the same page and on board uh, is is very important. We actually had an informal meeting, and we designed as part of the accountability part um, some smart goals. And so it was a simple conversation with the student senate. We developed a mission, and we developed points that we wanted to hit before the semester ended. And I think if that had happened at the beginning of the school year, <laughs> totally different story, yes. especially if we had included the entire association. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, that's all it takes is, is, is communication um, regularly, constantly, and, and not, maybe not possible, but not, <laughs> not entirely about, <laughs> about <laughs> yeah, uh, not always about SGA, it's is <laughs> about also just being friends and, and yeah. understanding where we're coming yes. from. Yeah, I think a huge moment for Senate this last year came after our SGA day when we sat and we like talked about like what is going on in the administration and afterwards we all went we all went to eat because apparently <laughs> wow food really it bonds, it bonds. And I think after that, you know, those of us who were in attendance, like we there was this, you know, additional connection because it's like, yes, one, we all shared a meal together, but we also spoke outside of SGA, mm -hmm. outside of being a senator, it was I'm a human, you're a human, we're both friends, and like, let's just converse. And I think yeah. that was a huge moment I, I for agree. the Senate this last year, and I think that, you know, just thinking about that, that would be something that we would continue, is just, we're beyond being SGA, we're also friends. Yes. We're, yeah, we're, we're friends, we really are. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> yeah, and I think sometimes we need to remember that before mm -hmm. anything else, because you can't really work well with perfect strangers. Yes. Uh, let's get some yes/no answers. Do you think <laughs> Cruz's um, administration has been a success or a success? Do you think it's been a success? Yes and no, or maybe. I don't think it's that simple. It, yeah. it really, it really isn't. There's just there's so many factors to consider. That SGA day that mm -hmm. was part of his planning was a great success. Yeah. There are other parts that maybe lacked communication skills, and that maybe. Could have been improved. I don't. I don't really think I could not comfortably give you a yeah. yes or no answer. Yeah. Based off of the fall semester, no. Based off the spring semester, yes. That's my answer. Great. Anyone else have anything to add to that? I mean, from from my perspective as being a senator, uh, Vice President Edwards has done a great job, especially with the Senate. Um, you know, in building that that community, that family uh, connection, and like Jamie said, and like Carlos has said. You know, that is something that's super important. Um, you know, that that SGA day was probably one of the best days we've had as a Senate. Uh, you know, just because we were real with each other, and you know, it wasn't uh, in the student life office, it wasn't in you know our meetings, um, and so that just friendship and, and you know connection uh, is, is something that I value and I respect you guys a lot. Uh, and so having having that connection with you guys, I'd be you know super comfortable in saying, oh hey, like you know we should attack this a different way. 
Um, you know, whereas in the fall, I was not comfortable in uh, you know really stating my opinion whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that day in and of itself was I think you know the turning point uh, for Senate this year, uh, this semester rather. Okay, so um, one of uh, Cruz's downfalls, as many students have pointed out to us, um, were basically media for the university. So we do get a lot of feedback. Um, is the fact that he's involved in so many things and student felt like he wasn't dedicated enough to SGO. Maybe he just didn't even have enough time to be dedicated. Um, what are you guys involved in? Obviously, you guys are all very ambitious people. You're doing a lot of things. Um, what all are you involved in, and how do you think that will affect your presidency or your vice presidency if you're elected? Um, I am involved in several different organizations um, with under Student Government Association, the Big Event Branch, which is like an internship in its own. I also work for the Student Career and um, Professional Development Office. I'm a student career advisor for them, and the list just goes on. But um, the moment that I decided to run for president, you have to make a commitment. And if you want to see change, you have to give a 100% commitment to what you're going to do. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here with the exact same questions, the exact same responses last year. So I've made a personal commitment to let go of any other leadership positions. The only thing that I'm holding on to is Hilltop Hospitality, just because I think prospective students are a big part of this campus, and they need a, a good introduction. And, I, and I'm very proud to be a part of that, as well as Hilltop Mentors, because I think uh, it's important to carry on with those freshmen as they go on through their first year. And those are the only two other commitments that I would like to make, aside from my job as well, for next year. And where do you work? I work at the Career Professional <laughs> Development <laughs> Office. No. So I help people with their resume, cover Shit, letter, nice. um, internships, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> what about the rest of you? Um, so <clears throat> I plan to continue as a resident assistant along with, you know, should be elected with SGA, something that Carlos has like implanted in my head. And it's, it's true and it makes sense. He says it all the time. Um, but having like two big things that you're a part of and for, I mean, I guess I kind of speak for both of us in this aspect, that would be SGA and residence life and be I think have the ability to dedicate our time evenly between the two. Besides that, other small things that I'm currently involved in, like Anna said, that when I decided to make this commitment to run as SGA president, I knew that that would come with sacrifice. And I am more than willing to make those sacrifices for my student body. Like she said, I have my two thing rule. <laughs> um, I am an RA and I will serve in this capacity. I've done it. I did it this semester as an RA and um, as a senator, as, as I did last semester as well as an RA and a CFO. Um, and I think I've, I've done a, a pretty good job of, of executing both um, adequately and, and well. Yeah. Again, to go off what they said, um, you know, the only thing, the only thing that I would probably commit to uh, is Hilltop Hospitality as well. Uh, I think it's. A great way to you know meet prospective students, and especially if we are the student leaders on campus, uh, you know giving that perspective uh, to new students. And then uh, the transfer student association. As a transfer student, you know I think connecting with transfer students is paramount. Uh, you know without the transfer student association, I don't know where I'd be right now. Uh, you know meeting new people. You know going through that first month of school where you know people and you know you know what they're involved in. Uh, and then you make those connections and go from there. I think that's that's so important. Um, so Hilltop Hospitality and Transfer Student Association. I mean, you must be brave to transfer and go straight into the SGA. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I honestly, uh, you know, didn't expect it. I, I can't. I think I was talking to my dad the other day, uh, and he he asked me, you know, what what did you expect uh, out of this? And I was like, I had like no idea that I was going to be so involved right off the bat. But you know these three standing here, you know, have helped me along the way, and I, I greatly appreciate it. We're gonna pause for getting more memory. We may you be running short on time. Yeah, we just have two questions left. Just, yeah. You guys have to we'll be at like six thirty, right? Yeah, we have to we be have there. To be we have to be there, there at six thirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like how we have the same meeting. So <laughs> just one now. Yeah. We'll, be we'll just go over the last. We'll just run. Yeah. Sprint. <laughs> 
So even if you don't, you guys all have a lot of really, really good ideas. I've read your um, platform statements, and you guys all have really great ideas. Um, if you don't win the elections, how do you plan on implementing these ideas? The beauty of this is that we're all really good friends, and we yeah. don't say that lightly. We, we really are yeah. friends. <laughs> and um, I see no problem if Jamie and Carlos, when us sitting down with them, and hey, th let's go over our platform so you can implement it in some way to yours or implement our ideas to yours. And, I honestly am confident that the same thing will happen vice versa because it's not about us, it's about the students and we both genuinely believe that. And I think something else that's great that not necessarily everyone knows is anyone can author legislation in the Senate. So even if we don't win but we still see this need and maybe Anna and Ben are really swamped with other things because they have great things in store also, we can still take lead on that and say, you know what, I find, I'm going to find me a Senate sponsor and I'm going to author this and I'm going to take care of this because I said I would. Yes. And I think that's something that we would, all four, would be willing to do, really. I think especially for the Green Fund, um, the, the ad hoc committee, yeah. that that is going to <coughs> happen whether win or lose, hopefully win. Um, but we'll leave a solid foundation by the end of the semester to have something solid go up next semester and in the ad hoc committee and actually researching and then for implementation if that should be the desire. I mean, I don't think, you know, we'd be afraid in, in communication. Uh, you know, I would, if, if, they, if they were to be elected, I'd probably be in the office, you know, just hanging out all the time. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, we, wouldn't, we would certainly not be, you know, afraid of saying, hey, well, why don't you guys look at something that, that Anna and I discussed? Uh, and, you know, obviously vice versa. Um, you know, that, that would be another great collaboration uh, between SGA and the student body. Um, so that's, that's just another way to, to look at it. So um, I heard, Jamie, I know you lost your grandfather recently, and on behalf of Hills of Youth, we're offering our condolences. And I know, um, Anna, you're also doing a big, big event, like you said, and that's a lot of work too. How are you guys, how are you guys doing it? Give me a secret. <laughs> This man sitting right here, <laughs> honestly. Um, when my grandfather got really sick, I was talking with Carlos about it, and excuse me, <laughs> from the very start, he was always he was really supportive. And as soon as I got word that you know he had passed away, Carlos was the first person that I called, and I was in tears. And he came like that at the drop of the hat. He was there for me, and that means more to me than I think he'll ever really know. But even when I was gone, I just got back from San Antonio yesterday because of you know services and stuff like that. And everything was in his hands. And I, I trusted him to do what we aimed and what we set out to do. And he took it and he went. And we had a great, we had a successful start to our campaign. And honestly, he's he really is my right hand man. And we, again, like we talk every day and about things other than SGA, and really, he's he's my motivation, he's my inspiration, he's the reason why I'm here today, and I think any success that comes from this is really in thanks to him. So, he's he's how I'm able to do it. Um, I think it's important as human beings to never forget the why. Never forget why you wake up in the morning and do what you do. And if you don't know the answer to that question, you should really ask yourself that question. Everything that I do, I, I do with the passion and I do with an excellence because I love every single thing that I do. And yeah, maybe I don't get enough sleep, maybe you know I lack energy, but you know what? It's, it's so beautiful even to see big event, and like just like coming to life and it's just something that you've worked, you know, we've worked for it for a whole year and then just seeing it on Saturday, it's just, it's a satisfying feeling of knowing like I was behind the scenes and because of me and my committee, like this came to life. So never forgetting the why. Well, that wraps up our question session. Is there anything else you guys would like to let the student body know as they're making their decision? Your elevator pitch, the best thought you have. <laughs> I think you, you, you really have a, a, a good group of people up here. And Definitely. That, that, that I don't know how they're going to vote. I, I really, really don't, don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. I think regardless of how this goes, we're going to have a great administration yes. mm -hmm. next year. And really, it's, it's up to the students. If you have yes. any questions, you can always come contact any of us. 
and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you and yeah you're gonna have a great administration next year regardless. I think I encourage them to read both platforms don't mm -hmm. just not just because you know Ben or I not just because you know Jamie Carlos like generally read what we represent and vote accordingly Well, thank you guys for tuning in and watching, and stay with Hilltop Views for more coverage at hilltopviewsonline.com. Yay! Maxine! <laughs> I hope it didn't.